what I want to talk about first of all is the power of live events. Now, of course, all of you are already exhibiting at Info Security Europe, so you should be giving yourselves a pat on the back because you are harnessing the power of live events, and as it says at the top there, you're making a sound investment. So just to talk a little bit about this and the research from the Association of Event Organizers, and the reason I want to go through this is because, yes, you've signed up for Info Security Europe 2019, but, you know, there are lots of stakeholders, there's lots of different people that you need to speak to when planning the event in your business. It might be sales directors, it might be people at board level, it might be marketing directors, some of you may be marketing directors. Um, but we'll just talk through some of these here. So you may not be able to see it on the screen, but I'll just talk through some of them briefly. So, you know, 76% of visitors at B2B and B2C exhibitions make those new purchasing decisions and have existing ones embraced. And a few of these other points here talk about live events beating other forms of marketing, being good for your image, leaving a lasting impression and so on as well. And that's all well and good. But what you've been hearing about today is about how it's not just important to exhibit and sponsor an event, but it's actually really important to plan out what you're doing beforehand and to make the most of your involvement. And that's what I'm going to talk about here, not just from an exhibitor perspective, but how you're best going to engage the visitors at this event as well, and a little bit about the do's and don'ts. So sticking with the association of event organizers, um, it's about what you do pre-show, during the show, and post-show. As I say to pretty much everybody I come in contact with, it's a hell of a lot more than the three days of Info Security Europe, and that's why so many of you are sitting in the room several months before the event. So pre-show, it's important to set up those objectives, whether it's meeting new prospects, whether it's shaking hands with people that you've met already. You know, the information security sector in particular is all about making connections. It's all about networking with people, kind of as Rally was referring to earlier with our visitor personas. Um, now, of course, it says here as well about infographics being powerful, you know, infographics with maybe less text than this. Um, but being able to produce effective marketing tools on site as well. So you don't necessarily need to have um, a 100 meter stand with you know, 150 people on it. It's about making sure that you're being as effective as possible. For your organization, having a 100 meter stand might be the right thing, but for some organizations, it might be having a four meter stand and being able to really convey the power of your brand and trying to grow. Um, being socially savvy, so connecting with the prospects before the show. So you've already heard from our PR team and you've heard from our um, marketing team as well about all of the different ways that you can get involved with Info Security Europe. You can already use the hashtag InfoSec19. Um, you, can all get, you can get involved on Instagram. You can tell us what you're doing before the show. You can get these Vox Pops that we've been talking about this morning as well. There's lots and lots of different ways to engage. And the key, key stat that I'd like you to go away with from today is that 93% of our visitors plan out their journey before they come to the show, 93%. So just make sure that you're making the use of social channels, all of those other channels that marketing and PR were talking about earlier to make sure you have the most effective um, on-site as possible. Um, and then finally about tailoring your communication. So we know that within this sector, again, that you know some people are looking to reach that broader audience. Some people in this room might have 100 key accounts that they want to get in front of. Again, you can use things like our matchmaking portal, make sure that you're getting in front of those right people, seeing who's registered for the show. As again said earlier by, our market, um, by Maria at the very start of today, our event registration is already up 18% year on year. So there are people that are now going to be um, available on our exhibitor portal that you can start pre-arranging meetings with on site in the next several weeks. So, during the show, um, and this again is something that the AEO have provided to us that's more generic rather than for the information security sector as a whole, but we can personalise and talk you through this as well. So, we talked a little bit already about mixing up the stand staff, and Vicky's talked about that as well. So, you know, we'll go through some of the delegate verbatims in a minute, um, but mixing up the stand staff means not just having salespeople on site, but having those technical people that are able to answer those questions before. Again, with Info Security Europe, the same as all of the other Reed Exhibitions events, um, it's you know, not a one-size-fits-all. You've seen about our visitor personas. Um, we'll be able to share that all with you afterwards as well, so you can see how different job titles, different personas engage on site, the different ways they're involved in the decision-making process. And it's also important then that you're customising your stand, so you're making sure that there's sales staff, there's technical people, there's people that can answer any question on your stand. Um, Engaging with the senses. So this one says, uh, did you know that we recall um, what we smell for much longer than any other senses? So get those creative juices flowing. So 
it's more than just graphics. So we know that quite a lot of exhibitors at Info Security Europe have their own pods, have their own demos and so on, and there's lots of freebies that are handed out as well. But you have to remember, there are probably 350 exhibitors on site. What are you doing differently? What are you doing differently to stand out from your competitors and from all of the other clients on the show floor as well? And then, not missing um, opportunities. So. Your, op your offering is better than your competitors? Well, that's what visitors need to be convinced of before they buy into what you're selling. So as I said before, you know, 93% of those delegates are planning what they're going to be doing on site. They're going to be making a short list of the companies. They're going to be looking at the products that we offer on the exhibitor portal, and they're going to be making their decisions there and then. So what are you doing before the show to make yourself stand out and to make sure that they come and see you during the event? Um, keeping it simple and then wearing with technology are on there as well. And then the post-show aspect I'm gonna cover in a moment here as well. I've been to lots of different competitor events in the sector and I get absolutely bombarded with sales emails and calls afterwards, even though I've made it very clear that I'm not necessarily a decision maker in this space. Um, it's something that's a huge pain point for our visitors and just wanna flag that as well. Um, as Riley was referring to earlier, the visitor satisfaction for Info Security this year is really, really high. Um, I believe the figure is 84%, but don't hold me to that, even though it's on video. Um, you know, the reason, you know, the reason that's important is because, as she said before, 55% of the visitors that come on site are new. So the 84% that are satisfied year on year, we want to make sure they come back as well, they tell other people, they bring their teams. And as far as we're concerned, if our visitors are happy, you're going to be happier. And that's what we want as well. We want our exhibitors to be happy because we want to make sure that we've got lots of visitors on site, lots of relevant decision makers and people that are going to come and visit you and essentially buy your products and services or whatever else you're coming to the show to achieve. So on the visitor focus side of things, I'm going to be reading out a few quotes that we've had from our delegates. Um, and this is feedback from the post-event visitor research surveys, our advisory councils and our research calls um, regarding vendors. Um, some of you may be aware of some of the activities that took place on site last year. And from that, we've actually created our exhibitor code of conduct as well. We already have a visitor code of conduct and that will be available to everybody afterwards. So just to first of all read the... Um, first one here and it's about the conduct of exhibitors because some exhibitors have been a little bit you know naughty and giving us the puppy dog eyes so no booth babes every person on a stand should be able to quest answer questions about the stand they're on they shouldn't be there just to hand out freebies having women on other stands who don't know anything about information security can make visitors assume that all women on stands don't know anything that isn't how it should be People should be able to walk up to any stand assuming that anyone they talk to understands what the company they're exhibiting with does and have an understanding of how their product works. And that's not a quote from me, that's a quote directly from a visitor. So again, when I read out these um, you know, verbatims that we got back from the show, the info security team goes through these with a fine tooth comb for weeks, maybe even months on end from our delegates and our exhibitors. And when you hear about what's new and you hear about everything else that's going on today, that all feeds into how we're evolving the show moving forwards. So what we're doing about that is, I mentioned about the Exhibitor Code of Conduct, but it's really important that we have a harassment-free experience. So we're dedicated to providing a harassment-free ex exhibition experience for everyone, regardless of your gender, your age, your sexual orientation, disability, religion, religion or origin. And anyone violating those rules may be expelled from the exhibition at the discretion of the exhibition organiser. We would also welcome exhibitors' support in taking further steps against any staff that they have employed that have been found to be behaving inappropriately. Now, of course, that is a vast, vast minority. I mentioned about the 350 standholders. It might only be one or two, but as far as we're concerned, it's one or two too many. And we need your help as well in um, stopping that. And also then um, referring to the stand staff. So we've talked a little bit about that already, but they should be well versed on your products, dressed in business attire, and there should be those technical people on the stand that can have in-depth technical discussions with visitors. Um, I jumped ahead a little bit to the next point, but this is all about navigation. So um, again, the quote that we've had here is, due to how large Info Security Europe is, it is hard to navigate around. There should be a clearer definition of how the booths are numbered so that people can easily find the stand that they're looking for. So you heard from Maria earlier, again, the feedback that we've had, we've listened, 
and that's why we're putting the um, exhibitor numbers on the floor, on those carpet tiles, in front of everybody's booths and stands, to be able to help people navigate the show a bit better. Everyone will be very familiar with this next one, which is noise. Quote here, there was a lot of competing speaker noise from surrounding vendors, and in the low overhang area, it got very loud. For, so for some of you that have been at Info Security Europe for a number of years now, you'll know that from 2017 to 2018, we made our aisles wider. That was partly to help people navigate the show better because a huge amount of the visitor complaints we got were about how crowded the aisles were, but it's also because of the noise levels from other stands. So what we'd ask here, and again, it's going to be in our exhibitor code of conduct, I believe, or certainly within the operations manual, it's about respecting your neighbour. So keeping sound levels within your property, turning speakers to face inward into your stand. If a neighbouring company finds your presentation too loud or disruptive, just please turn the volume down. Um, if you plan on running formal presentations on your stand, which a heck of a lot of people do these days, then just consider providing headphones for the audience as well. And we try and do that where we can in our theatres. Now, this next quote is a little bit harsh, um, but I'll read it anyway. Technical staff. So, if I talk to a salesman, I don't trust a single word they say. Do listen to what I've just said. Um, techies are less available for these events, but are crucial. It's the salesmen who are present to push their products. I want to speak to the techs, as they will know if the product is even technically compatible with what we have. And then finally, what Ross was talking about earlier, stand design. So the quote here. Minimalist stand designs are fine, but if all the staff are busy, it helps if the stand design clearly states which products are supplied. That way, if I'm interested, then I can come back later. So remember to clearly state the products and services that you offer in your stand design. That way, if your staff are too busy to speak to a visitor, at least they will know if you offer the solution they're looking for, they can come back later. Feedback from the visitors. So I made reference to it before, if these slides work. Um, by the time someone comes to speak to a vendor at the event, they've already done their due diligence. They have a short list. I mentioned that 93% stat a number of times because I want you to remember it. Cold calls and emails from vendors are meaningless. All goes back to risk register and horizon scanning and their strategy is dynamic. They bring different people to the event for different reasons and they have a plan before they uh, visit. So bringing techie people, architecture, risk, compliance, each of those people are looking for different things from our um, delegates how they use the exhibition. So as I mentioned before, most people pre-plan uh, which stands they see before they attend. And again, the feedback that we've been getting is that there aren't enough people with proper knowledge on the stands. And I really want to hit home that point. Crucial that people with technical knowledge are on the stand that can answer the technical visitors' questions or the conversations will never get very far. It would be good if there was a way to book time specifically with them. And that's again our visitor feedback. And then the final point here, which is um, very, very important to make, is that when people come to the event, it's the whole team. And look how happy they are when they come as a team. So some CISOs will take their team and treat the day as a team building day. So we know from our advisory councils that some of the CISOs will actually be bringing their whole team with them. They will be telling them beforehand, or they'll be working with them beforehand, to actually plan out their days, plan out what they're doing at the event, what sessions they're going to attend, what vendors they're going to visit, and they are actually going to be given certain guidelines of what they need to achieve on site. And then they meet up for networking at the end of the day at a lot of the big parties, which are all around, not just the venue here, but all around Hammersmith and Kensington as well. So you heard a little bit about Vicky from uh, about this earlier, but what are delegates expect from talks? So they don't like sessions that end with a sales pitch. They feel it's really annoying if you get to the end of a talk that was good, only to have the vendor say, and we can solve all these problems for you. If they want a sales pitch, they will invite the vendors to come and pitch to them. What they're looking for are use cases and failures. I know it's quite hard to get somebody to talk about a failure, but that's what they've asked for, and talking about how to implement a system. And then the final thing, which uh, is a problem year in, year out, scanning. So Everybody, to a person on the advisory councils, objected to the level of scanning and the number of cold calls and emails that they get following the event. They see this as untargeted sales, and it has a negative impact on their perspective of the vendors and even their willingness to attend the show. 
One CISO explained that it shows a complete lack of understanding of how they make decisions about what they purchase. They want a consultative approach, not to be sold snake oil. Now, we do get less delegate comments about this, and we have improved over the years, but it's a problem that the sector faces as a whole, and we see that at every competitive event that we go to as well. And then the final quote I'll leave you here with is, only comment is, on this slide, only comment is that some companies are too pushy to scan your badge purely for numbers and carpet bomb marketing purposes, which is rather off-putting. So I know that there are some um, exhibitors and vendors that we speak with in this room that don't necessarily scan every single badge. They have qualifying criteria. They make sure there's a conversation first. They'll have lead scanners placed at different parts of the stand to map the user journey that people go through. Some may only scan people that have demos. But there's lots and lots of different ways to be able to approach that. So think about how your team is using the scans at the event and how making best use of that afterwards as well. So. What I want to talk to you about now is examples from a recent conference in the sector that will not be named. Our content manager, Vicky Windsor, who you heard from earlier on, was due to attend a recent event, but she wasn't able to attend the event, but that didn't stop her from getting several emails afterwards. So I will just read these ones out here. Hi, Victoria. I understand you, that you attended the blank conference last month where blank was present, and I was curious to see what triggered your interest. Again, she didn't go. Would you be free for a quick call sometime later this week or next week so I can understand what your identity and access management initiatives are for the coming year and see how Blank may be able to help you with those? Now, hopefully that's nobody in this room, but just to reassure you that Vicky doesn't know how to make decision making for identity and access management. Hi Victoria, thanks for stopping by at Blank 2019. Just wanted to follow up and see how your availability is looking for the coming weeks to connect with our regional director to discuss open source security and the remediation of the known security vulnerabilities and license obligations you currently have. Furthermore, to discuss how we helped enterprise security professional with their security strategies. Looking forward to knowing your availability. And then just a couple more examples here that I'm not going to read out because I think you get the point by now. But I think that that's the important thing that we talked about before. It's not just about the pre-show and during the show, but it's also how you follow up with people as well afterwards.